beloved brothers and sisters, welcome to the Surefire Life Conference, the platform the Almighty God has given unto us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. That's what we have been doing, and that's what we will continue to do. Just for a background, we have spent the whole of first quarter looking at the theme, Abundant Life in Christ Jesus, which is also our theme for the year 2022. To be able to unravel this theme, we took a challenge to cover the synoptic gospels within 90 days. That is to read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John within 90 days. In order to learn what Jesus Christ himself has taught and commanded us to do, so we will do in obedience to what he has taught and has commanded us to do, and therefore enjoy his abundant life, which is our theme. For this year, according to John chapter 10, verse 10b, that Jesus Christ said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So that's a promise of God to you, a promise of God to me by the one who himself is faithful. That's his name, faithfulness and truth. According to Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, his name is faithfulness and truth, Jesus Christ. Oh, the faithful witness of God, the firstborn from the dead, the name that is above all names, the one that has, is highly exalted. We well, thank you, almighty God, for giving us this blessing, this great promise. So for all the things we have learned, join me to say all glory and thanks be to God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It has been a wonderful and awesome learning and life-changing and transforming experience for me and for you. So today we want to conclude the teaching. So abundant life in Christ Jesus, we want to conclude today. We have done a lot. Studying the Synoptic Gospels, we have rolled this theme into six headings, which we have been looking at. That is, number one, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus Christ? Number two, what are the social issues and what solution has Jesus propounded or Jesus taught. What are the solutions that Jesus has taught? Number three, how do we as a Christian or as Christians rather live daily? What duties, what services and practices should we embark on? Number four, what are the wisdom for living that Jesus Christ has taught? Number five, divine power. Divine power that Jesus has promised. How do we manifest this power? These greater works that Jesus did and has commanded us to do the same. Number six, leadership model of Jesus Christ. Oh, this servant leader that fulfilled all of God's will and purpose for his life. How can we do the same? We have touched on a number of aspects of these uh, headlines. So you can roll these headlines into two broad groups as well. What we have to do, what we have to do. As Jesus has always said, <laughs> it is the doers of the word. So there are things we must always do in this journey of life. You have to do something. If you don't do something, you will see nothing. You've got to do something. So Jesus Christ said, those who hear his word and do it and put it into practice. I'm paraphrasing. They are those who are wise. Those who have, you know, they are like one who has dug deep and laid his foundation upon the rock and the wind of life, the storm of life, no matter how they blow that person will stand firm and stand strong. Yes, so it's always about the doing. So one aspect of these six headlines is the doing with what we have to do. The other aspect is what God has to do. 
Glory be to God. So our second scripture of the text is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. And that's where I want to take the focus of this aspect. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power, divine power, underline that, that's the key word there. And you remember, that is the broad group number five, divine power. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through which you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Glory be to God. So brothers and sisters, abundant life is by the divine power. It is by receiving Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, and all that comes with that life, that new life. It is only when we receive Jesus that we become a recipient of that divine power that comes through the Holy Spirit of God that is given to us. And so the scripture there says very clearly that we have become become partakers of the divine nature. We have become partakers of the divine nature. So we want to look at that aspect of divine power. Divine power. So can you echo with me? Divine power. Glory be to God. See, another way to look at this abundant life in Christ Jesus is to come to the place where we, of all certainty, prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for our lives. That's why I said it's by divine power. We have to receive it through the Holy Spirit that God gives to us through his son, Jesus Christ. It is only those who are in Christ Jesus that can be talking about abundant life in Christ Jesus. So abundant life in Christ Jesus, abundant life that Jesus Christ has promised us, requires us to do all that Jesus has said and taught us to do according to the gospels that we have read. And requires us to receive from God the divine power. So abundant life comes by the divine power. Are you ready to receive this divine power? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And not just the way and the access, he himself has demonstrated this and has also taught us, just as uh, I mentioned, uh, that it is coming to that certainty and proving what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for our lives. According to Romans, it says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in the book of John, John noted because John's focus is to let all humankind, everyone who comes to read the book of John, to know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, is the Son of God, he is the Christ. And so John records significant miracles where Jesus demonstrated the power of God clearly manifesting in him that no one else has done before him. And John recorded this to prove that Jesus is the son of God. 
Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. And Jesus Christ also in the book of John spoke to all of us, all believers, that all these things that he has done, demonstrating that he is the Messiah, he is the Christ, he is the Son of God, we also will do that. So he promised this same power to manifest in us. That's where it is important for us to know the divine power of God and to have the divine power of God. Glory be to God. So last we looked at the traditionally called seven, the seven I am of Jesus Christ in the book of John. And of course, I have shown us that there are not only seven I am, we were able to get nine I am that Jesus said who he is, who, what he is, what he represents. Glory be to God. To just quickly run again through. Number one, he said, I am the bread of life. Number two, he said, I am the light of the world. Number three, he said, I am the door. Number four, he said, I am the good shepherd. Number five, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Number six, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Number seven, he said, I am the vine. I am the true vine, the vine and the true vine. And I added two more. Number eight, I am the son of God. Number nine, I am the Messiah. Glory be to God. Let us also look at what John has recorded as these notable miracles, which are also called the seven traditional outstanding miracles of Jesus Christ that John has recorded to show that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ. We may not be able to read through all because uh, there are lengthy reads. And other synoptic gospels also recorded very significant miracles. Let's start by looking at John chapter 2. Verses 1 through 11. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. This is the record of the miracle Jesus performed by turning water into wine. And here Jesus again demonstrates that God is able to turn any situation around for us. Oh, glory be to God. So if you can appreciate this power of God, that by the divine power of God, God can turn every situation around in your life. Then you understand that abundant life is available to you, is available to me. Glory be to God. So very quickly, let's start from verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. So they ran out of wine. So I will jump now to verse 7. 7, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they fill, up the br fill them up to the brim. 8, and he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. 9. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed him. I want to emphasize that verse 10 again for you. It says that you have kept the good wine until now by the divine power 
through the Holy Spirit that has been given to you, that is the divine nature that is in you. Let that divine life flow through you, brothers and sisters, such that your life will continually be a testimony as the, 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 the guests testify here. Whatever has, been, has finished, whatever has yet not manifested, oh, the sweetness of God, the divine life that God has given to you right now, let it change. Let it be transformed by the power of God in the name of Jesus. That men, people, you yourself will continually to testify that God indeed has made you a praise. Let this guest testify, this guest testify. And they said to him, you have kept the good wine until now. May that be your portion by the divine power of God. May that be my portion by the divine power of God. May that be the portion of our families, everyone that is connected, that your life will continually change by the Spirit of God into something better every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. In the mighty name of Jesus, the good of God, like the good wine, in this wedding ceremony, we will continue to overflow in your life and in my life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Number two, healing of the official son at Capano. John chapter 4, 46 to 54. John chapter 4, 46 to 54. Again in the same Cana. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at Capernaum. I jumped to 48. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The noble man said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he went his way. And his son was healed. Glory be to God. Just speaking the word. Go your way. Your son is healed. By the divine power of God that has been given to us. By that divine nature, the spirit of God that is in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above all this. Go your way. God's will and purpose for your life and for your family is done, is fulfilled. In this year, 2022, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, that child that has run away, that child that has rebelled, is being restored. Go your way and have peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever has been striving against the will and the purpose of God for your life is here by silence forever. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you that is sick, go your way. You are made whole by the stripes of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, abundant life in Christ Jesus is by the divine power. Glory be to God. Number three, healing an invalid at the pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem, according to John chapter 5, verses 1 through 18. I want us to look at that a bit deeper. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 18. I will just start from verse 5. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. 38 years. Six, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is tear up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Let me pause here and make a declaration over your life and make it clear to you. Oh, if you do have a means to do medical treatment, so that is fine. Please go ahead and do medical treatment. But I want to announce to you that there is divine health available in Christ Jesus. And that is part of this abundant life. There is divine health available. So while there are physical means available, taking good health, uh, good care of yourself, please do that. Exercising, 
having your regu regular medical checkup as the means are available for you to do, please go ahead and do that. In addition to that, there is divine help, particularly for you who may not have the substance, the money, the means to take care of your health. So Jesus knew this man has been in that position for a long time. And he said, do you want to be made well? He's asking you the same today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He does not change. Let me announce to you that one of the trademark of Jesus Christ is healing the sick. And he's still doing the same anywhere Jesus is. And wherever the divine nature and divine power is available, healing takes place. Are you sick right now? No matter how long this man has been sick for 38 years. Oh, and Jesus came and hear what Jesus said to him. After the man said, I don't have the means to go to hospital. There was a hospital there, a type of a hospital by the pool of water that when the water is there, people will jump in. I don't have the means, I cannot carry myself to the healing pool. So whatever you have been afflicted of, whatever affliction has been in my life, in your life, in your family, in my family right now, hear what Jesus is asking. Do you want to be made well? What is your answer? Yes, 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 Lord, I want to be made well. Do you want your family to be made well? What is your answer? Yes, 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 Lord Jesus. I want my family to be made well. And now hear what Jesus is saying to you. Jesus said to him, rise, get up your bed and walk. What does this mean? Get out of that situation. Get out right now. I ask you, get out. Get out of that negative confession. Tell yourself, I am healed. Jesus has asked me to rise up, take up my bed, and walk. It means whatever you were unable to do before, begin to do it now. Oh, you that is always saying, I'm tired, I am weak, say now. Jesus has healed me, I am strong. What you couldn't do, begin to do it. Jesus has healed you. And so I confirm the word of God upon your life, upon my life, upon everyone that is connected here by the stripes of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever caused that infirmity, be loose from that infirmity, be loose from that power. I cast it out. I terminate it in your life, in my life, in our life. And I declare you free and whole. In Jesus' name, I am free and whole in Jesus' name. You are free and made whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Nine, and immediately the man was made well. That day was the Sabbath. Whatever tries to hold you down from receiving your miracle, the manifestation of the abundant life, of the divine power, of the divine life that God has given to you. Today, trample it, go against it, nullify it. It must not stand. It must not come to pass in your life. It must not restrict you anymore in the name of Jesus. Then the Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. You know what they were trying to do? They were trying to put him back. So where you have come out of, whatever tries to put you back in that situation, you must resist it. You must refuse it in the name of Jesus. So they were trying to put the man back in that situation, to keep him, whereas Jesus has set him free. And I said, you, arise, take up your bed and walk. Remember the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. But these Jews wanted to keep the man whom Jesus has set free, bound again. So they told him, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath. Oh, what is that thing? They will tell you, no, no, you cannot do this. Because of this, you cannot do that. 
as long as Jesus Christ has declared you, rise, take up your bed and walk. Rise, start up that business and prosper. Rise your hands into that plow and don't look back. Rise, come out of that life of sin. Come out of that life of cheating. Come out of that life of immorality. Come and receive the living water. Whatever Jesus has said to you, do it. And don't look back. And don't listen to anybody who tries to call you to look back. So they try to call this man to keep him bound again in the situation that Jesus has brought him out of. So he answered them. He who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Verse 12. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? Then the one who was here did not know who it was. So Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. You know, many of us take the miracles of God for granted. We take this abundant life Jesus has given us, the divine nature, the divine power that is in us. We take it for granted. And so it is time God is calling you to become conscious. That's what this teaching is about. Become conscious that you have the divine nature and therefore you have the divine power and therefore let the abundant life flow in you. The divine life and the abundant life flow in you. For it is this divine life, it is this abundant life that will lead you as you continue throughout life to enjoy that eternal life at the end. To fulfill all of God's will and purpose for your life. Glory be to God. Verse 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So Jesus here identified what was the root cause. Sin, sin no more. Brothers and sisters, sin no more. Divine life, abundant life is for those who have come to Jesus Christ and have borne the bridges of sin. They have borne the bridges of sin and say, I am not going to go back no matter what. They are those who said like Paul, I look towards the mark of his high calling. I press forward. I press on to that mark of his high calling. They are those who hunger and thirst for the, 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 the living water daily, the living water. Oh, they are those who are ready to say, let me decrease. Let Jesus increase in me. Let the power of God flow and overflow in me. So Jesus Christ is always faithful to anyone who is faithfully seeking. Are you faithfully seeking? Are you faithfully longing for the manifestation of this abundant life? You've seen here like this man, though in his ignorance, did not know who it was. But he received the healing anyway, like many of us has, have received. The abundance of God, the blessings of God, and yet we don't become conscious of this mercy, this goodness of God. So Jesus visited him and said, from today, change your ways. Brothers and sisters, change your ways. Change your negligences. Change your backsliding. Change your lukewarmness. And so the man now knew Jesus and made up his mind and carried his bed and he went. Verse 16. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done this things on the Sabbath. Jesus will break every tradition and protocol to do his will, his purpose in your life and in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. The man carried his bed and went. He didn't listen to anybody anymore. And you know this same story uh, in the other synoptic gospel, Matthew in particular, Matthew uh, where the man told them, he said, the one who healed me, when they stopped him again, he said, the one who healed me is the one who said, carry your bed and go. And he carried the bed and went. Number four, Jesus fed 5,000 at the Sea of Galilee or near the Sea of Galilee, according to John chapter 6, verses 5 through 14. So talking about notable miracles of Jesus Christ. So number one, turn water into wine. Number two, healing the official son. Number three, healing an invalid, which we have discussed. Number four, feeding 5,000 
near the Sea of Galilee, according to John chapter 6, verses 5 through 14. Number five, walking on water, John chapter 6, verses 16 through 21. Number six, healing a blind man, John chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. And then number seven, raising Lazarus. Oh, John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. I want to add number eight. He rose up from the dead. Hallelujah. Jesus rose up from the dead. What nobody else has done and can do, he rose up from the dead. He came out of the grave and he declared, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You may not understand what this transformed Jesus means, what this glorified Jesus means. But we're going to look at it as we continue in this journey of eternal life, making simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. We will come to that to deal with it. Let us just pick a few points from that number seven, raising Lazarus. And that is the same place where Jesus declared one of the I ams. That is in verse 25, John chapter 11, verse 25, where Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Let, let's read it. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. I want to add verse 26. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He added, do you believe this? Jesus is always asking, do you believe this? If you can believe this, it will be your, your reality to manifest in your life. And you will enjoy the abundant life in the name of Jesus. He is the resurrection and the life. So we continue. Let me just start reading from verse 40. Jesus said to her, that's John chapter 11, verse 40. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? 41. Then they took away the stone from the plate where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. Hear these brothers and sisters, the Father always hears Jesus. And Jesus has said, whatever you and I who have come to him, who have come to God through Jesus Christ, will ask the Father in his name, he will do it. John chapter 14, verse 13, hear it. He said, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Glory be to God. Whatever you ask in my name. So I continue to read. The Father always hears Jesus. So whatever Jesus has said, if you do what he has said, you will see the manifestation. You will see the power of God because the Father always hears Jesus and answers and does what Jesus has asked and has said. So I read 42 again, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. 43, now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot, with great clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. My Lord, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Anything that was dead in your life, whether it is your organ, your body, by the resurrection power, I command it to come to life now in the name of Jesus. Just the way Jesus commanded. You hear here 43, because at times some people when we say, I command, they say, you shouldn't command. I don't know how else you understand verse 43. Hear it. Now, when he had said this thing, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And so I call for whatever organ in your body has ceased to function, has become dead by the resurrection power in the name of Jesus. 
Come forth and begin to live. And whatever in your life has been stolen, has been eaten, has been swallowed up, whether by the devil, by the enemy, by whatever it may be, physically, spiritually, I call it forth, come forth, come back to life. In the name of Jesus, abundant life is by the divine power. And the divine power is given to us by the Holy Spirit of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, John chapter 14, verse 12. Jesus Christ promised us that all this that he has done, all this that the Father has done through him, we also will do the same. That the Father may be glorified in the Son, and the Son may be glorified in us. Let's read John chapter 14, verses 10 through 12. Verse 12 being the emphasis. It says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. The Father who dwells in me, Jesus said the Father was dwelling in him while he was walking this physical earth. The divine power was in him, walking in him. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Well, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than which he will do, because I go to my Father. Greater works. And so we have. Look at the eight notable miracles of Jesus Christ recorded by John, including his resurrection from the dead, the body of Jesus transformed into glory by the divine power of God. Hallelujah. Jesus, while he was here on earth, by that divine power raised Lazarus from the dead. And today, he is still raising the dead through his ministers, through his servants, you and I. He's still feeding 5,000. He's still turning water into wine. He's still healing the invalid. He's still healing the blind eyes. And many more. What can we count? Like John said, he said all the miracles that Jesus performed, all the things that Jesus did, if they were to be recorded, even the whole world will not be sufficient to contain the books that would be written. There is nothing Jesus cannot do by that divine power that has been given to you and I through the spirit of God, the divine nature that is in us. Abundant life is by us obeying and doing everything Jesus has instructed us to do, enabled by the divine power of God. That is the power of the spirit of God that has been given to us. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Have your life, has your life been transformed by the Spirit of God? Come to Jesus, submit to him, and ask God to give you his Holy Spirit, this divine nature, through his son, Jesus Christ. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we'll end, and let's just hear your contribution um, as we are rounding off this teaching. God bless you and fill you with his Holy Spirit and let this divine power produce the divine life in you, in me, and in all those whom God will call to be partakers of this divine nature in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So please feel free, open the line. If you have anything to share, to add, Yes, Brother Sonny, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, I want to say one or two things. That's my understanding of the, uh, today's uh, teaching. Among the many things that you've actually 
uh, taught by the help of the Holy Spirit this uh, morning. Uh, what really come to my mind is the, the statements in the John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, where Jesus talked about the fact that uh, he, he never said that if we ask, uh, if we want something, if we want something that is going to do it, he actually emphasized that whatsoever. And when you read that place, and I really just have to sit back and say, ah, wow, he is saying whatsoever. That means there are no limitations to what we actually get from him if we ask from him. So, and again in verse 14, he, in that same verse 13, he's talked about the fact that uh, he's doing what we ask of him will bring glorification to the Father. And God, you know, is always uh, looking for the glory. God always wants to be glorified. And so I see here that uh, if we should ask Christ something and he's going to do it, and that will bring the glory to God, that means God will not fail to do what we ask him, we ask him to do. So I really thank God for this uh, revelation and the understanding. And uh, I have to ask, ask myself, why is it that I do not have most of the things that I really want in my life? And the answer just came that I've not been asking. So I really thank God for today's understanding and revelation. So that is what I, I really pick from today's uh, teaching. Thank you very much. Thank you for that excellent contribution. Yes, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, the word of today is always been a blessing. It's always been reassuring. And to make it look so simple by recounting the miracles, though we have been reading them, but recounting them has brought uh, uh, more lights, more understanding to us. And when you now read uh, verse 11, Talking about what, what question did Jesus do you believe? It looks so simple, but believe what? In fact, that reminds me of my reading of verse 17 of that John. Mm -hmm. You know, we heard of Jesus praying before he was crucified. I think I really see that perhaps the prayer of Jesus before that is what is recorded in John chapter 17. I really love uh, um, the prayer for his disciple, which is mm -hmm. from verse six. Mm -hmm. So Jesus stresses because the disciple believe. What did they believe? That he was sent from God. Yes. He now asked them. He asked the father to protect the Can please I read go it? ahead. Go ahead, please. And I'm using NIV. It says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. And seven, now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. So do you believe that? So that is one of the belief Christ wants us to believe. Eight, for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. Do you accept it? This is what the Pharisees refused to accept. And yes. That goes to God. So now he said, they knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Yes. I prayed for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. Mm -hmm. so they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And yes. glory has come, like uh, my brother John, God wants glory. Glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And mm. I am coming to you, Holy Father. Mm. Protect them by yes. the power of your name. The Amen. name you gave me so that mm -hmm. they may be one and mm -hmm. we are one. While I was with them, 
I protected them. I mm. kept them safe. By that name you gave me, none mm. has been lost except one doomed to destruction. So that scripture would be fulfilled. fulfilled. Thanks be to God. So my now is based on we have believed. As we believe, as the disciples believe, we have believed Jesus was sent from God. Yes. And as Jesus prayed that God should protect them, that protection too had been extended to us. Yes. So if we believe, God will protect us Amen. and God will do all that we ask yes. to that glory, we'll honor, yes. praise, adoration will be to him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that contribution. Can I also say something, Pastor? Please go ahead. Yes. Thank you for the uh, quite uh, clear exposition of the teachings of Jesus. Uh, uh, one, one thing that strikes me is in the early miracles that Christ did, he attended to the basic human needs, what we were called food, shelter, and clothing. Yes. And that shows that um, uh, in feeding, in, 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 in performing the miracle of turning water into wine, mm -hmm. not necessarily justifying that people should get drunk and in, in situations, but it's just to show what uh, it is that uh, those, part of those basic needs are there. And also, at the time that he fed the 5,000, I think many, mm -hmm. the multitude are gathered there, meaning that he had done a lot of healing work. And that's mm -hmm. what they said. Uh, it's only the few that are recorded there. I mean, the, the, the bringing to life of the son of the noble man and also the healing of the man uh, by the pool site. I mean, yes, yeah. these were two illustrative things before the feeding of the 5,000. And many people flocked to him uh, to do that. But he, you know, uh, taught them, to, I mean, now attended to feeding them, which is also the issue of food. Yeah. And part of it is that when he said to the man that he healed by the pool side, go and sin no more. I mean, perhaps one may think that it's something indirectly because. We never know whether the man had uh, was paralytic or for whatever reason. It was emphasizing the need to do things that should be done to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if somebody has to take medication to avoid complications of the illness, take it yes. so that you don't get sick. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and I think that is the key point that Jesus emphasized there, that he healed you and saw you at the temple. Go and sin no more. This sin may be a willful act of doing something that is outside the norm. And whatever we do in orthodox medicine as doctors, I think most of this knowledge is drawn from God because without God, no one will have the knowledge to be able mm -hmm. to heal mm -hmm. or even for the medicine that can heal somebody. And when a doctor tells somebody, take this medicine, mm. it's a way of saying that adhere to those instructions so that you mm -hmm. avoid medications. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a whole lot of lesson to draw from the miracles of Jesus. And just yeah. From that. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much for that contribution about drawing a parallel, as I would call it, from that. Um, go and sin no more. Uh, while sin, yes, could be uh, the uh, unrighteous work, whatever. It may be, it could also be those habits from what doctor has said that are unhealthy. I think we can draw a whole lot of lesson from that singular statement. I think that's what, uh, doctor, you have done well to draw that. Go and sin no more. Go do the necessary things. Go do the required things. Yes, thank you for that contribution. Let us just pray. So I want to pray again from what we have heard. Tell him, Lord God Almighty, let this divine power that you have given through your son, Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, be in me and manifest through me. Go ahead and pray. And we will just agree. Heavenly Father, let this divine power that you have given to me, given to us through your son, Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, the divine nature that you have given to us, 
let this divine power manifest in my own life. Lord Jesus, you have said all those things you have done, you will walk them in us, walk them through us. We heal ourselves to you. We ask that you walk the, your miracles, walk your divine walk, your greater walks, your divine power in us and through us. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And so, Father God, we agree. Let this be our experience. Everyone who has heard this word, heard this truth, let this be our experience, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Let all glory, all praise, all honor be to you, our God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is where we close, brothers and sisters. Uh, bye bye and have a blessed week.